Good morning. God's blessings to you as we gather here to celebrate our Lord. It's a little crisper morning this morning than it has been the last few. Um, I hope your Thanksgiving, although it may have been a very different occasion, was certainly a blessed one for you and you encountered um, some real reasons to give thanks. Um, there's a lot to be thankful for. And uh, we need to bear that in mind always. Um, it's just part of, uh, it's part of who we are and the alternative lifestyle that we live as followers of Christ. We give thanks even in the most, um, even the most, even in the most extreme circumstances. There's always something to give thanks for, and a thankful attitude uh, certainly leads to a healthy mind, a healthy heart, and a healthy spirit. Um, and certainly, we gather here today to give thanks to our Lord. Um, just a reminder: our confirmation class is going to meet at four o'clock today, and so bring your workbooks and also your video or scrapbook work. Um, so we can look it over. Thank you all for the many contributions to our youth food drive. Now, I sent out an email to folks saying that we actually did 1503, right? Well, that wasn't exactly true. So now I have something to confess. I didn't intentionally lie and sin, you know, but um, it was interesting that I had somebody come up to me and say, hey, here's a couple bags of food. I meant to bring them Sunday. And then another person came up to me and said, hey, here's a couple bags of food. I meant to bring them Sunday. That happened two more times. <laughs> so when all was said and done, it wasn't 1503, but 1530. We raised 1,530 items, and that was pretty much in-house here. So thank you all very much for contributing to our Youth Food Drive the people that are benefiting from it are the people, and there's many different families that are benefiting from going to our free food pantry, simply pull up, they take what they need. When it gets toward empty, we get back out there. Thank you all very much for the ways you're contributing to that. As a reminder, you saw it up on the screen already, our congregational meeting is next Sunday, December 6th at 9.45. We're going to meet in the fellowship hall, we'll be socially distanced, and we'll be voting on the budget. Also, too, don't forget, I mean, you've heard about it before, but I'll keep bringing it up. December 20th is our hope for the holidays. From 5 to 7 p.m., we're going to be outside. You'll have a chance to follow kind of a guided path to encounter shepherds and an angel choir, the manger scene, and then Santa Claus come fireside. And so it's really going to be a different sort of event. Um, and I hope you'll make that part of your of your. Um, holiday tradition of your, of your Christmas, uh, getting ready for, for, for uh, Jesus to come, come December 25th. You can pick up a tag back there, Melody's standing right by the angel tree, and now she's doing the Vanna White thing. <laughs> Thank you, Melody. <laughs> you can certainly pick up an angel tree tag there. If you're not familiar what to do, you simply choose one, you, you go out and you buy that gift, you bring the, the, the gift unwrapped along with the tag, back by mid-December, I believe it's December 13th, and you put it in the fellowship hall in the box over there marked uh, Christmas cheer, and um, you go ahead and uh, really help have some youth Christmas just be that much brighter. So thank you all very much for that. If you don't or you don't want to shop or you can't get out to shop, you're welcome to make a donation. Simply mark Christmas cheer or, Chris or cheer family in the note so that we know we can get it going the right way. Last note that I have, then we'll get to worshiping our Lord. Um, here we are starting the season of Advent, which means that we light the Advent wreath. And so we are going to be doing that after the prayer of the day. While the hymn is being sung, we'll be lighting our Advent candle. Okay, that's all the announcements that I have. Please rise as you're able, and let's get to worshiping our Lord with our first song.
Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are a captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all of our sins. By his authority I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Father of light, we begin this Advent season with the lighting of our first Advent candle and remembering the hope you feed us each and every day. Rekindle your hope in our hearts as we wait for Jesus to come again. Keep us ever vigilant to what is going on in the world around us and give us everything we need to be prepared for the day of your coming. Jesus, your name we pray. Amen. to hear God's word. The reading today comes from the 13th chapter of Mark. Jesus said, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender, and put forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that hour, about that day or hour, no one knows neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, come on, y'all. Good morning. 
Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so today's lesson is about hope. And I don't know about y'all, but this year, hope has been one of those things that's been lacking for me. Because it's been one of those difficult years. But I was thinking on the way here, and Kelly and I were talking about hope and um, exactly what hope means and you know, what it means to us and how we can have hope. And so I started thinking about the different letters in hope. And the H can stand for heaven. The O can stand for open your eyes. The P can stand for peace. And the E can stand for earth. So in heaven, of course, there's always peace. But here on earth, we sometimes have to really look hard for it. So if we open our eyes or stay awake, as our Bible verse today tells us to do, is to keep awake. We open our eyes and we can look for peace on earth. So from heaven to earth, open our eyes and look for peace on earth. So we can all have hope. I'm not going to end with the prayer. I'll let you do that. <laughs> so the H stands for what? Heaven. heaven. Great, great. The open, the O, no, I said it. <laughs> The open your eyes is what letter? O. o. The P is for? Peace. Peace. And E is for? Earth. Earth. Okay, I, I had every day in my head, right? I think that works too, right? I don't want to change what you said, right? I don't want to change it. Um, but, you know, as I'm thinking about things, um, and I'm thinking about, you know, about this crazy time that we live in, I think we do see change every day, and we can react to it one way or the other. In the change that we experience every day, we can act to it and say, oh, good Lord, not again. And we can offer that prayer up to God, saying, oh, how much longer, oh Lord? Or we can go a different route. We can go, uh, we can go and we can look up to heaven and say, Thank you, God, that I can make this adjustment. Thank you, God, that this is a small change instead of a big change. Thank you, God, that I can reach out to you in hope when the rest of the world is going, oh, good Lord, not again. So there is a sense in which, in which the sense of the hope and the idea of heaven and keeping our eyes open now, looking for peace, on earth around us in our everyday transactions really makes good sense to me. And I think this idea of hope being around us um, is reminded, uh, is given to us in our gospel lesson for today. Um, do you remember the front part of that crazy gospel lesson? It's called Mark's Little Apocalypse. And the front part of that crazy gospel lesson is all these terrifying signs. It's Jesus talking about the sun being blotted out and the earth and the moon no longer shining, the very powers of heaven shaking the earth beneath. And we look at that and say, how is that good news? How is that meant to give us hope? You see, back there in Mark's world, when the gospel writer, right? The gospel writer of Mark Back there in his world, he was dealing with a people who had lost their hope. They had lost their hope because around 70 AD, the temple had been destroyed. Their house of worship was no more. And it wasn't just their house of worship that had been destroyed by Rome. It was also their economic and their cultural and their social and their social center. Everything, all of life revolved around the temple, and when they rebelled against Rome, Rome retaliated, destroyed the temple, obliterated Jerusalem, left them the pieces to pick up. They had no hope. And maybe how we find ourselves is feeling like a bit like our lives have been decimated. Because things aren't the same, and, thing, and we do struggle with the change, and we never know what changes are coming from one day to next. We don't know what the school systems are going to do, and that causes us anxiety. We, don't, we, we, we hear rumors and see on, on our news feeds businesses closing down right and left 
we've had to make all these different kinds of changes because some of us are working at home and some of us aren't, and we want to go back to work, we want to go back to school, we just want to go back. But we live in a world now that's changed. And certainly while we haven't um, experienced the temple destruction, the loss of our cultural and socioeconomic center, we certainly feel like we have been moved off center. So Mark remembers, as he writes his gospel, Jesus' words. Jesus' words given to the people that were there. And the words that he gives is meant, yes, to be a scary message to those who are far from God, but it's meant to be a word of hope to those who are people of faith, people like you and me, people who are sincerely following after Jesus and looking to imitate his lifestyle in a world that's gone haywire for right now. So how do those words give us hope? Because in, from Jesus' own lips, we hear the words, remember how powerful God is. This God, who some people would fear the sun being blotted out, the moon no longer shining, we can see hope in that because we remember how powerful God is. Jesus is reminding us that God, our God, is creator of all. And this same God who has the power to blot out the sun, darken the moon, and shake the very heavens themselves is bent on one thing, one thing. And if you read just a little further down, that one thing that God is bent on is reconciliation. To make things right in the world. To make it so that we are no longer experiencing wars and famines and diseases and all kinds of the craziness that life would throw at us. But we experience the peace of God. Back to Amy's thing. God is so powerful, and yet God loves you and me so much that he gave us Jesus so that we might have hope, so that we might have the light dawn in our lives. When we lit the Advent wreath, I so wish, I so wish we had like a, a way to make it really dark right around the Advent wreath. So that that way, when um, this morning, when Michael came by with that light and he touched the candle and it lit up, that we might see that darkness driven back by this, this one little candle flame. And as we enter into this Advent season, we are given this incredible hope, this one little Advent flame, this one little spark. This one little reminder that you're not forgotten. You're not abandoned to the winds and the waves and the chaos of the world. But you are the object of God's love. You are the one that God is bending all of creation toward so that you might be connected to Jesus and connected to our Father in heaven and connected to heaven itself. And so by having that one little spark of hope inside of you, you let that hope then radiate out of you and shine in a world that is desperate. Don't believe me, the world's desperate. What do you see as signs? You know, that's the next part of the gospel lesson. The next part of the gospel lesson, Jesus picks on a fig tree and says, you know, when you see the branches becoming tender and the leaves beginning to bud on the tree, you know that summer's near. How do we know that the end is near? We see it because we see people craving tenderness. We see the buds of something different. People who are bent on hostility and meanness, harshness, and shouting. People who are more bent on division than anything else are starting to change their tune. I'm starting to hear the language, a, a, a language, people saying, people speaking more openly about 
about creating places of, of sanctuary, creating places of love rather than hostility. I hear people talking more about the need for kindness and gentleness instead of harshness and meanness. And if I see that in the world, certainly that is a sign. That's a sign, I think, of a spiritual awakening, that it's close. But I honestly think that that's a sign that Jesus is very, very close to coming again. Because people are beginning to crave the very things that God has planted inside of them. And one of the things, one of the ways that it means for us to be created in the image of God is that you and I crave community. We crave connection with other people. We crave connection with God. And I'm starting to see people give voice to that. That not only is it important that we gather, and however that means, whether electronically or in person, it doesn't matter, but that we are gathered and we are unified in our thinking so that so we have a sense of belonging. And the very peace of God begins to enter into our lives in a fresh, new way. And the light of Advent dawns inside of us. Now here's the kicker. This isn't a light to be hoard. And I've already alluded to this, but let me go in just a little bit deeper. The light of Advent, the light of Christ, isn't something that we keep to ourselves. It's meant for us to, this light is meant to shine out of us into the world. We become the vessel by which the light of Christ shines out into the world. We become the people who are the body of Christ. We begin to work as his hands doing acts of kindness and love for people. We begin to act as Christ's feet by going to the places that are, where darkness reigns to bring this light. We begin to act with Jesus' very voice so that people hear the good news, hear of an alternative way of living, a lifestyle that's geared toward love and forgiveness and compassion rather than all these other dark things. We become the very heart of Christ Jesus our Lord, exercising the same kind of compassion, doing the same kinds of compassionate things that he did in the world. Why do we do that? Well, we keep awake, right? We've been given a job to do. That's the reason why we do it. We've been given this job to do, and that's the third part of that gospel lesson that's there. We do it because just like when the master goes away and everybody in the house is given a job to do, we want to be busy with doing that job. So when the master comes back, he can look at, he can look at us and go, well done, good and faithful servant. I mean, think about the things that we are doing as a community of faith so that people might experience the love of God and kingdom of God breaking into their lives right here, right now. Angel tree, right? We go out there and we purchase a gift, we bring it back, and we make a youth's Christmas a little bit brighter. Or the food pantry, you know, that's just a free thing. People drive up, they take out what they need if there's food in there. When it runs low, somebody in our community is putting food back out there. And on and on it goes. And I'm watching all different kinds of cars drive up and make use of that place. All kinds of little ways that we're letting the light of Christ shine out of us. All kinds of little ways that we continue doing the work that Jesus would do. Allowing Jesus to be. Allowing um, ourselves to be Jesus' heart and hands in the world. So folks, this is Advent. It starts today. It's a season of hope. 
It's a season in which we are warmed, we are warmed in the light of Christ Jesus our Lord. And it's a season in which we let Christ Jesus shine. so that we always remain watchful for your presence in our world. When we recognize you, let our hearts be glad to join your work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, we pray for those for whom the light shines dim. We pray for the sick in need of healing, the sad who need their joy restored, the lonely who need a friend. Thank you for hearing us as we lift up others who we love who need your healing touch. Lord, in your mercy, your hear our prayer. prayer. Jesus, we pray for those who are experiencing and enduring added stress this holiday season. You promise to be with us always, even to the end of the age. Make your presence known to them and to us in such a way that our lives are rich in a manner that is helpful and encouraging. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, we pray for the end of suffering of those affected by the COVID virus. Protect and inspire those who are forming the cure. On a different note, Lord, help us to learn from this pandemic. Guide us to learn lessons so that we do not take what we have for granted. Build belief, trust, and obedience in your church. Help us to let go of what is worn out and broken and embrace what is new so that your church speaks to every generation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. In your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all, hope, all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. But sure, sign of God's love and peace with each other. I prepare the table for our Lord's Supper, I invite you to make sure you have your own prepared there. There it goes. Oh my goodness. So that y'all know, I'm going to write the company and say, hey, to make that cell phone tab a little bigger, you know? <laughs> good, good, good. So we prepare our hearts to receive our Lord as he comes to us in this holy supper. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks, Lord our God. 
it is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave them for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for remembrance of me. With this bread and with this cup, we remember our Lord, and we remember how he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As you take the bread in hand, this is the body of Christ given for you. And as you prepare your cup, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Please receive these sending words. Go with great hope and expectation into this Advent season. Watch and wait for the coming of the one who is making everything new. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you to God. God.